Quran to say, uh, as you have mentioned, in one ayah mentions that the Quran is mentioned in previous revelations. And another ayah says, this prophet, this last prophet, is mentioned in previous revelations. And that's at least part of the application of then the ayah that you mentioned, which is telling this man, if you doubt it, go ask them about it. See what they say. Now, on that subject, as one non-Muslim observed, uh, this seems to tell a very important story because it may well have been that uh, the Christians in Medina at that time used the same books that they use today for a Bible. Maybe. But as one non-Muslim scholar reviewing this has suggested, here was a chance for the Christians to prove this man was a fake and they didn't take it. Why not? The Quran is revealed piece by piece. It's recited. People are, are given this information, Muslim, non-Muslim alike. They hear this. As this man had pointed out, uh, this I believe was Muir's comment, he said, um, why is it then that the day when this revelation came, or one of the revelations came that said, the last of the prophets is mentioned in their books, why didn't some Christians say, you're wrong? Look, come with me now. In fact, you go ahead of me to my house. Help yourself to my books. Look through them all. Nothing in there. Go ahead. Go. I won't stop you. You could say, I just heard this for the first time. I don't have time to go and hide the books. Go and look. But nobody did. See, they must have been afraid of something. Why didn't they take up this challenge to say, this time you've gone too far. I can prove you wrong because here are my books and there's nothing in there about you. What were they afraid of? Muir, I believe it was Muir, I'm not for sure, uh, had suggested that maybe what this means is that one of the books that the Christians were using at that time had a very clear reference to the last of the prophets, so they kept quiet on this subject. Uh, even today, though, the Muslim would still point out there's many indications that you have uh, a great deal of trouble in making all of these things fit somebody else you know, there's an interesting situation that exists uh, even now in Nablus, uh, the West Bank Territory, I think, Nablus. Anybody know Nablus? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have in that city some uh, Samaritans. These are people who are descended from people who, in very ancient times, accepted the first five books of the Jewish books and no more after that, just the first five. So the Jews don't regard them as Jews. But they took just the first five books and they built a religion around this and they exist, I think they say, about 400 families till now. In, the first, in book number five, there is a place there, which probably you all have heard uh, talks on the subject. Chapter 18, the book of Deuteronomy, is saying to uh, Moses, Musa, alayhi salam, uh, God is uh, telling him, someday I'll raise up a prophet from among your brothers like me, listen to him, etc. Do you know that the Samaritans, in their tafsir, that is their commentaries on their scriptures, in this place they have a footnote which says, probably that prophet is Muhammad ibn Abdullah who came to the Arabs. See, what they don't seem to continue through is to understand, well, he didn't just come to them, but that even is their understanding. If they can look at this and see that it seems very obvious that this can be the meaning to this, so probably when it says that prophet, that's who it means. That's an interesting observation made by somebody without Muslims pushing them into this. They'd probably maybe rather not say that, but that's their conclusion of it, and that's in line with what you're talking about. That it's told the prophet, if you're in doubt about these things, go ask. And the lesson might not be so much in that you will see where it says that, the real lesson might be in that people will say, I don't want to talk about it. That might tell a story, too. <laughs> Sorry to take so long on it. Come in, Sadiq. Uh, my name is Sadiq, and I have a question for either of you in uh, regards to Catholic faith. What I want to know is, um, what, what is it in those books that, uh, in the Catholic Bible that Protestants find objectionable? And how, um, how serious
seriously should we take the book of Barnabas, Barnabas um, as Muslims? Is it authentic or has it been authenticated? And maybe you could tell us something about it. You know, what's uh, uh, the, actually, the problem with accepting the six extra books and the pieces of uh, the two other books, I guess, in the Catholic Bible, the Protestant basically bases that on saying that, but this is a decision made years later. He's saying to include those books is a, is a decision somebody made long after we had already agreed which would be uh, the right books. Uh, that's basically it. Uh, he may pursue that point to try to say, and in fact, the reasons that we object are these, and he may mention something. Usually the only one, uh, the, the most common one that is suggested is they tell uh, from the book of Tobit or Tobias, they'll say there's a story there about a, which they say is too much like a fairy tale, that a man was sleeping and a bird's nest fell on his eyes and blinded him, and so the story goes and so on. They say that's too fantastic of a story. It couldn't really happen. Which is interesting, because some of the other books that are there tell some strange stories. I'll tell you about a man who was riding his donkey, and the donkey turned around and started talking to him, and, and so on. I'm, I might be tempted to think, maybe this doesn't belong in there either. If, you know, by the same standards, if that's how you judge. Uh, Barnabas is not, of course, among those books. That's another uh, issue. Um, but there are some mistakes in, in the book which show that whatever its origin, it's suffered somewhat the same fate as other books. It's passed through some hands. What's useful about it to me, but it's only a personally, is that it explains a lot of things. There are, as I mentioned, uh, some of the things that are called the difficult sayings are G of Jesus are things which he said which were riddles that he didn't answer. The answers to the riddles are in the book of Barnabas in many cases. They may not be even the right answers, but at least they give an answer to what seemed to be impossible. According to the Bible, on different occasions, Jesus would stumble his enemies or stump them. He'd uh, say, uh, doesn't it say this and that in the scriptures? Then how can this be so? And they couldn't answer, so they left. But he doesn't answer either. <laughs> in the book of Barnabas are some nice answers to these things, so I appreciate it for that reason. Uh, it tends to put a certain degree of credibility on it, but at the same time, it also seems to say, in one place, uh, putting words in the mouth of Jesus, saying, I'm not the Messiah. Well, that's an un-Islamic position, so if that's the accurate translation of what's there, then this is passed through some other hands that have put uh, this in there, if it was uh, true in the first place. The, about the, the only thing that you'll ever prove to a non-Muslim, or to a Muslim for that matter, from the book of Barnabas, is to uh, show him what he may not have known before, that there are more than four Gospels, that's all. To say, oh, but here's number five, and give me time, I'll bring you ten more. <laughs> there's, there's lots more. In the Roman Catholic Douay version of the Bible, uh, which was first published in 1582, uh, they have um, a total of one extra book there. There's 73 books. And um, in the Protestant versions, there's 66. The names of the books, uh, of the seven books which are in the Roman Catholic version and omitted uh, in the King James version and other Protestant versions are the Book of Baruch, of Judith, of Tobias, 1st Maccabees, 2nd Maccabees, Wisdom, and Ecclesiasticus. Um, just one more point I'd just like to add. Uh, which is actually uh, restating what Brother Gary Miller had stated uh, earlier on about this word muhayminan in the Quran. Uh, and Brother Gary Miller had uh, uh, already stated that it is quality control. So in relation to all previous scripture, um, the Quran is muhayminan. That is, whatever the Quran uh, you know, contradicts, so it will deny, it will reject it. Uh, whatever it uh, it confirms, that is okay. It